Welcome back, CSE 121, to part two of 14 Checkerboard for fall 2020 for Programming 1. And what we're going to try and do here is just take our existing code for this checkerboard that we created with basically how many functions did we use? We used one, two, three, four functions, and try to get it down at least to three functions so we don't have to have two draw row functions. We could draw all the rows with one function and two function calls. And we're going to use arguments parameters because we are sharing most of the same things in here. Whenever you look at a function, you're thinking, wow, we're sharing almost everything except for A, B, and C. Then why not just use A, B, and C as arguments and send them along when you call the function? And that's what we're going to try and do. Now, we'll use this one here because it's called draw rows. And the first thing I'll do so I don't mess with my original, because I'll keep this one the way it is, is I'll go here and I'll just fork it. And when you fork it, it puts a 1 after it. I'm just going to call it 2, just so I know it's the second one. Because for some reason, having a 1 there doesn't always indicate that that's the, the second one. So I like having a 2 there. So I'll just call it 2. Then just hit Enter when you do that. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of look at this first. Now, this is what we're looking at. We have draw rows here. And we're going to try to pull this stuff out of here. Instead of being variables in here that, that we're basically declaring variables and assigning variables, what if we declared and assigned the variables in here? And we said minus 200, comma, minus 200. We put them in there as arguments. Then we don't need these. Then I can wipe them out of there. And But we're still using them. We're still using x, y. x, y still has to be defined. But when you use parameters, parameters actually define them in a way. We're just going to put x, y. And they kind of get defined. Basically, the way it works is the x is going to equal minus 200. The y is going to equal minus 200. And then when this guy gets the x and y, it's going to get minus 200, minus 200. And we'll see how that works by doing that. Now, I could even just try it out right now because I'm only changing this one. And if this works, then the other should work. Now, the only problem here that we may run into is we redefined x here as minus 200. And if we have to do that for the other ones, it's not going to work because they actually are going to minus 150. So let's just see what happens here. Let's see if this works first of all. Now what we're doing is we're just sending these. So let's send these along and see what happens. And it works. So that's OK. That's working OK. And let's see if we could do the same thing down here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy draw rows the function call and put it here and paste it again. And this time I'm going to put in negative 150, negative 150, because that's the only thing different basically about what's happening here, we think. And what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to delete it. Let's just delete this whole thing and then we'll just kind of work from here. But before I do delete it, let's just double check everything. So here we have the minus 150. Here this thing is going over 100. See, these are the same, these are the same, these are the same. Let's just look at what's different. These are the only things that are different. That and that. And that's going to be a problem, I think. But let's see. Let's Remember, this one's going to start on 200. This one's going to start on 200. This one's going to start at 150. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to get rid of this whole thing. Let's just wipe it out. And now we're down to three functions. Look, we're down to 34 lines of code. And let's just see what happens here. And there's the first, and that works fine. Here comes the second. Oh, that's not good. So it runs into a problem there. It starts off OK, but then it runs into a problem. And, and here's the problem, the fact that they were different. And how do we make this one the same that it could be used? Well, one thing we can do, how do we make them the same? Well, look at it this way. Once they're done, what happens? In addition to just going back to a certain place, what you can do is actually just increment it back. So instead of just saying go back to this absolute point, what you could say is go back minus 400 from where you were. So if you were, if you were over here and you say go back to minus 400, he's going to go back here. And if you're over here and you say go back to minus 400, it's going to go back to there. So it's actually going to go back 400 from where it was because they're, they're always kind of going 400, because they're doing 50, 50, 50. They're each doing pairs of 50. So once they get to the end, they're going back. So let's see if we could do that. Let's see if we can change this. Instead of saying x equals, let's see if we could decrement it and say x minus equals 400. So basically say, OK, after each time you draw a row, go back 400 pixels. 
So after you draw a row, go back 400. So after this goes goes through, it's going to go back 400. After this one goes through, it's going to go back 400 when it does its row. So let's see how that works. Hey, and real quick, if you're wondering why I'm measuring from the white part at the end where it looks like it's past the last black square, it's because the incrementing actually adds 100 before we count back to the beginning. So we, we do have to add in an extra 100. That's how we get the 400 down here at the end. If you look at the code, you'll see it does add 100 one more time before we actually go back 400. And the first one's still working fine. That's working fine. And look at that. So we were able to cut down our code. Now we have some spaces in here, but 34 lines of code from, I don't know, there were like 48 on that other one. And all we had to do here was just kind of think about this a little bit. And again, I don't, I don't plan these out or look these up. I kind of work on them and then think, oh, what would make it be more efficient? And, and again, we found the things that are shared. So we're using them as arguments instead of, you know, local variables in each function. So that way, the things that are different, we can use here as arguments and send them along. And then everything else can be the same. Now, the only thing that was changing was, was where it was resetting. But one thing we, we thought about is if we can reset just 400 from where it was relative to where it's at instead of absolute. Absolute means go back to minus 200 or go back to minus 150. But relative means go back 400 from where you ended up. Go back 400 from where you ended up. And that's what we're doing here. We're going back 400 from endpoint. So that's what we're kind of doing there. So we're able to build that into a function that's more efficient because now we're, we're using everything that shares together. And actually doing things that are relative are better than going back to absolute because there's more chance of an error when you're doing things absolute. If you could do something where, wow, this is a function, you could plug anything in here, um, that's fine. We can add more rows, we can add anything we want. But now we're using one function that's drawing the rows and all this code is consistent in here. It's all shared except for these two values, except for the x, y for each. And there it is. I'll just run it one more time and it looks pretty good. And now if you wanted to change one thing, let's say you wanted like a checkerboard and it was red in the background instead of black. How would you do that? Well, we could think about drawing red squares, but that would be a lot of code and we have to repeat a lot of stuff. How about if we just made a, a big red box behind everything? If we filled it with red, but it has to be behind. Well, we could do that. How about we take this and I'll cut this and we put it first so that it draws it first. And I'll do it right after here. It's still going to start at the bottom, except what it's going to do, we're going to do a begin fill and an end fill with red. And hopefully what it'll do is it'll draw all these other squares on top of it. So if we want to make a red background, we could go here before it draws it, and we're just going to do a begin fill and then an end fill, t dot end fill. And we could use t because it's a global variable. It was declared outside of here, so we'll do end fill. Now, what color is it going to do? Well, it needs to be red. We don't have red indicated anywhere in here, so what we could do is before it does the begin fill, right after it gets the pen down, what we could do here, well, let's just change the color here. T dot color, and we'll put in red. And let's run it. Now, I think it's going to do that. Oh, it's doing everything red here. We can't do that because it's making everything red. And what the hell did I do? Yeah, I can't do that because it's redefining everything as red. Now, T is becoming red so i all right i figured out the problem here <laughs> i had to stop and go back because the last time i did that it seemed pretty easy but somehow i messed something up here and actually i messed something up my end fill was messed up so that's why it wasn't filling with red so i just have to move that back out of the loop i always use that as make sure you unindent your end fill and i forgot to do that that messed me up so let's do that quick and now we have the red background. Now it's still making a bunch of red squares here. So I, I thought I did something different last time, but I guess what we could do here is just outside of the function, you could just say t.color black. That way, after it runs this function and calls it, then we're turning the turtle black. So we could do it to dr actually draw all the squares, but not actually the box behind it. So if you did that, that way it'll draw one big red box and it'll put all your black squares. So that'll work like that. Now the only thing that I was having an issue with too is that I liked having a black outline. Now you probably don't even notice that there's not a black outline there, but you can make a black outline. So one thing you can do is you can specify different fills and strokes. So you can change this and say t.pencolor 
they have something called pen color and this is just under the turtle graphic thing if you go into if you just search python turtles and then and you go to the module documents if you just go down here you'll see something and this is color control and they show color pen color and fill color now color is both pen color is just the pen fill color is just the fill and they have the properties when you click on here but it's pretty much the same so when you go here if you say pen color black and fill color red that means it should make a black outline around here and keep the fill now we still have to do this I don't know if there's a better way to do this other than than what we did other than just putting that that attribute right there in the middle it's kind of not very elegant but it is changing it so you put you know draw black squares you could just do that but there might be a better way to do that but it's working right now you can see there's a black outline around it and you can even adjust the thickness but I'll just leave it like that for now that's what I wanted I just wanted a checkerboard kind of look and I just have to make sure that this one is using red and then we go back to black so this just goes back to black I don't remember doing that the last time I did that but that's what I had to do here but we can change the pen color and the fill color differently and that's just another extent you don't even have to do the red and black to be honest so as long as you you worked out using this draw rows with an x and y and sending the two function calls with the two arguments and updating this thing so it actually uses it relative to where it's at by using minus 400 from the end of each row then you're good so that's exercise 14 checkerboard i hope it helped you a little bit about being efficient and about putting you know loops inside of loops and functions inside of functions with the turtles we get to experiment a little bit and we get to see visual stuff which is nice too because the minute you get it wrong you know instead of just looking at error messages you see what's going on here so sometimes that can help you if you're a visual person which i am as well so that's exercise 14 and that's part two which actually took the code down a little bit shorter than that and that's checkerboard for our python turtles